Today I want to share a message that I believe is going to be a prophetic word for somebody about a road to recovery. In verse 6 it says, Now David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man and his sons, and for his sons and for his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. And verse 8, David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Somebody give God some praise right now, right there in your living room. Come on. Whew. Pursue, you will overtake them and you will recover everything. About a month ago my personal Facebook got hacked and I lost access to my Facebook. Not a big deal until I found out that I couldn't manage my public page which had at this time I think 90,000 followers and everyone on my team lost the access to my public page. Now that became a little bit discouraging. It turns out when we got to the bottom of it that I got hacked by some terrorist group from Middle East. Why did they want to have trouble with me? I have no idea. And through days upon days reaching out to Facebook and asking them to reactivate it, give us access to the public page. Finally after about a week they gave us access to my public page but my personal account because of the such a gravity of this problem they said we will never reactivate your personal account because terrorists had the hang of it. I remember one time I woke up in the morning and I heard this scripture in my spirit. Pursue, overtake and recover all. Meaning recover everything from terrorists. Not just get the public page, I'm going to get the private one, I'm going to get everything back that they've taken from me. It's a small little thing but a few days later I got that page back. We recovered everything. We learned very important lessons about business management uh, under Facebook and uh, brought safety to my Facebook, to the church's Facebook and now I've learned a very powerful lesson. Anything that you lost, maybe the enemy attacked you or the enemy hacked you, you can get it back. You should get it back. Maybe the enemy has taken your health. I want to encourage you today, don't surrender don't settle don't just simply say well but I can st I still got my salvation God wants you to pursue to overtake and recover all maybe you lost certain things in your life I want you to hear the word from God today he wants you to pursue he wants you to overtake and he wants you to recover all there's a guy that comes to my home group I've known him for about five years Five years ago he started to come to our church and he gave his life to Christ. It was at that time that he had his second DUI and because of that he lost his two daughters, two children. His ex-wife with whom he was already not living together, she was living in another state in Alaska actually and the kids went there. He lost the custody of these kids. He was only able to see his kids on holidays and during summer. It was very grieving. I remember seeing him, you know, asking God for it and a little bit blaming himself too because, you know, it was kind of his fault. But he decided to believe that he's going to get his kids back. Year after year, while waiting for his kids to come back to him, you know, doing all of the stuff with the lawyers, going through courts, he put himself through a treatment program. He stopped drinking completely. Asked God for the strength to restore relationship with him and God. And two weeks ago, after five year battle, he got his kids back. Whatever this pandemic has taken from your soul, maybe it's taken your joy, maybe it has taken all of your savings, maybe it has taken your job and you feel depleted, discouraged and grieving right now and sad, discouraged and depressed and, and maybe you're like David, you're, you're, you're grieving until there's no more power to grieve. I just want to encourage you today to pursue, overtake, and recover all. Don't settle for where you're at. Rise up and go after what God has in store for you. I watched the testimony this week of a pastor whose name is Robbie Willis from Arkansas. He's a pastor, very young man in his 30s. 
he started to develop these symptoms where his uh, hands started to shake then um, he started to faint and um, other symptoms started to come he went to the doctor they said everything is fine with you things started to get worse he went eventually to the person who they did a scan on his brain and they found out he has Parkinson's disease he was very distraught he had his whole life in front of him he had children a young church and he's only in his 30s they gave him medication to manage Parkinson's because if you know Parkinson's is not it's not curable as he was managing that his life started to to get worse his physical health started to deteriorate and one time it's about a year after he got diagnosed he came to a worship service at his church this was in 2016 2017 he comes to a worship service in his church worshiping having this disease of Parkinson's there's a lady that comes to church from Texas so he's in Arkansas a lady from Texas Mary Davis he he hardly knew her she comes to him during the service and says God gave me a word and he told me to pray for you and he says I need to pray for you and he says well go ahead be my guest pray for me and she begins to pray for him she doesn't pray an ordinary prayer she comes against the sickness and she said I just pray in the name of Jesus against incurable disease and I commanded to go as she prayed he said before prayer my hand was shaking after prayer he says I noticed that my hand stopped shaking his son comes to him after the service and said dad are you done with Parkinson's disease so look he looks at his son and he says son I think I am a few weeks later he goes to the doctor and says doctor I want you to examine my body I watched in the testimony when his doctor also gave a witness and says I've never seen anything like it there is no trace of Parkinson's disease in this man's body pursue overtake and recover all I believe God wants you to recover your health I believe God wants you to recover your family I believe God wants you to recover your finances he wants you to recover your job he wants you to recover your ministry he wants you to recover your joy pursue overtake and recover all but David in here teaches me of how to recover all so in the next few moments I would like to share with you and practical steps that will lead us to a recovery a road to recovery in here it says that David was distressed people spoke of killing him because they were grieved they didn't mean to kill him and then there's this phrase but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God before God help David to recover all God renewed David's strength you have to renew your strength before you can recover everything that's been stolen from you renew your strength so that you can recover what's been taken what's been stolen what sin has taken from you what maybe this pandemic has taken from you maybe bad decisions have taken from you renew your strength why because when we go through loss when we go through grief when we go through pain when we go through suffering when we go through poverty when we go through sickness there's a lot of blaming that's going on in here this man his man blamed David David could have blamed himself because it was David's fault why Amalekites took the women what was he thinking not leaving some men to protect the vulnerable men, children and, and, and wives. What was David thinking? What was David thinking attacking Amalekites and telling Philistines that he was attacking the outskirts of Judean territory? What was David thinking joining Philistines to go fight against Israelites? There was all of these thoughts coming against David and saying, David, what were you thinking? It was your fault and as a leader you failed. And now these people's lives are in danger because of you. And then there was thoughts of what if my family is already dead? What if my wife and my children are gone? Everything David went through, all the hardships did not come close 
to the seriousness of this loss. He lost everything. We're not just talking about his retirement. We're not just talking about his savings were drained. We're not just talking about his identity was stolen. We're talking about everything David worked for is taken from him. And David, instead of pitying himself, instead of grieving, he already grieved. Instead of blaming, his men are already doing that. The Bible says, I don't know how he did it. But he went to the presence of God and he strengthened himself in the Lord. He strengthened, he renewed his strength. If you don't renew your strength, you will blame your struggle. You will blame your boss. You will blame your past. You will blame your parents. You will blame your mistakes. You will blame your father and your mother. You will blame your ex. You will blame the president and the governor. If you don't renew your strength, you will play the blame game. The Bible says in Proverbs, he who falls or faints in the day of adversity, his strength is small. So if you faint when things are hard, it's not because things are hard, it's because the strength is weak. See, I used to think if I faint in the day of my trouble, it's because my trouble is great. But the Proverbs tells me that it's because my strength is small. But I don't have enough strength for the trouble. I only have enough strength for good things in life. Therefore, in the stress, in the distress, in the discouragement, I have to strengthen myself in the Lord. The Bible doesn't say his men strengthened him. The Bible doesn't say that Samuel strengthened him. He strengthened himself in the Lord. If you want to recover, which I know you do, learn to renew your strength. If you renew your strength, God will help you to recover what the enemy has stolen. Mm. I know you're asking me a question right now. How do I renew my strength? I'm so glad that you asked. To renew your strength, I would like to highlight just four simple tr truths. One, make God the source of your strength. Not people. Not someone else. Don't wait for somebody to input strength into you. Don't wait for someone to change things in your life so then you feel better. Don't wait for, oh once I get a house, I'll be good inside. Once I'll get married, I'll feel good inside. Once I get a car, I will be strengthened on the inside. That means that you're putting your strength in somebody else's hands. Make God the source of your strength. In Philippians it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. David says of God, he says, the Lord is my strength and my song. Israel called their God by this name, the strength of Jacob. God wants to be your strength. Not your marriage, not your family, not your breakthrough, not your finances, not your good looks, not someone else, but God being your strength. God spoke to Paul and he says, Paul, my grace is enough and it's made perfect in your weakness. What that means? If your spouse don't want to serve God, don't depend on your spouse to serve God. Strengthen yourself in God. If your children may be misbehaving, don't let that take away your strength. Make God your strength. That's number one. Number two, how to regain and renew your strength. And that is wait upon the Lord in worship, in prayer, in His presence. It says in Isaiah, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Wait upon the Lord the same way a waiter waits on his customers in the restaurant. They bring food to the customers. Bring God worship and just wait. He will reset your strength on the inside. He will reset something in you and you will come out. The situation will be different. Your attitude will be. Situation will be the same. Your attitude will be different. Wait upon God. Let Him reset you on the inside. Let Him restore your strength. Let Him restore your joy. Let Him restore your peace. Let Him renew you. Number three, the third way to renew your strength is to pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Spirit. In Jude it says praying in the Holy Spirit by, the, by that we build our most holy faith. In Corinthians it says that we encourage ourselves when we pray in tongues. When we feel depleted, when we feel discouraged, when we feel empty, 
one of the best antidotes one of the best weapons you have to strengthen yourself in God is to open up your mouth and pray in tongues you may say but I don't feel it that's the thing is you don't have to feel it it's a spiritual thing and spiritual things they just get activated by your choices and when you pray in tongues 10 minutes 15 minutes an atmosphere in your room will shift and an atmosphere in your spirit will shift and the situation might be the same but you will walk out different you will be like Moses walking down the mountain your face is shining you will be like Jacob who wrestled with God all night and then he's facing the same Esau except now he's seeing the face of God in Esau why because when you renew your strength something shifts in the spirit realm you are on your way to recovery when you renew your strength. My God, Ooh, Jesus, Ooh, I feel it. The fourth way to renew your strength is speak to your soul. Don't live in your soul. The way you renew your strength is when you remain in the presence of God. You speak in tongues. You say, God, you are my strength. You are my source. And then you have to speak to your soul. Don't live in your soul. David speaks in Psalm 103 verse 1. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. In verse 2 he says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all of His benefits. David is talking to his soul and he's giving his soul a lesson. He says, remember, he forgives all of your iniquities. Oh soul, remember He heals all of your diseases. Soul, remember He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Soul, remember He satisfies you with good food. He renews your life like the eagles. In the other psalm, David speaks to his soul and he says, Soul, why are you discouraged? Why are you down today? Remember, I will yet praise God. I will trust in God. Soul, get up. See, most of us, we spiritual people who live in the soul. We don't live in the soul. We live in the spirit. We speak to our soul. So if your soul is not feeling good in the morning, during the day, listen, give your soul some coffee. Give your soul some good food. Give your soul some promises and tell your soul everything is going to be okay. Tell your soul, praise God because He's going to see me through. Tell your soul that God is the source of my strength. Speak to your soul. Don't let your soul speak to you. You speak to it. Calm your soul down and say, God has got this. God is in control. I don't know how we're going to pay the bills. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But my God will supply all of my needs according to His riches and your glory. So soul, bless Lord. Soul, bless the Lord. And don't forget. Don't forget what He did before. Don't forget what God did before, soul. Speak to your soul. That's how you renew your strength. I don't know exactly what David did to strengthen himself in the Lord. He probably talked to himself. He waited on God. What I do know is something shifted. He went from crying to being strong. And then the scripture says this, and David inquired of the Lord. David does, didn't ask God for instruction until he received from God inspiration. David did not ask God to speak to him until he made God his strength. I want to highlight that very importantly. God will not give instruction to those who have not trusted him as their inspiration. God will not speak to those who have not made him their strength. My proof for that? In the same time, David is asking God to speak to him. And God is speaking back to David. Saul, King Saul, at the same time is in the other territory facing Philistines and King Saul did not lose his family. King Saul did not lose all of his possessions. King Saul is facing a threat and the scripture says and Saul inquired of the Lord and God said nothing. You know why? Because God doesn't want us to come to Him for instruction first. He wants us to come to Him for inspiration first. He only speaks to those who trust in Him to make Him their strength. Saul never went to God and said, God, I'm hungry. I'm empty. I'm scared. Could you help me God? Could you strengthen me? The Bible says Saul was so weak that after the witch doctor spoke to him, he collapsed physically. Saul was emotionally drained. 
and instead of coming to God and strengthen himself in God and then asking God to speak he just came to God and said God give me direction but God says nothing maybe you're asking God what do I do next and you're not hearing God I would like to give you a word right now don't ask God to speak until you have made him your strength God speaks to those who made him their strength Elijah was so depressed they didn't want to live God didn't give him any instructions until he fed Elijah he made him sleep he restored Elijah and then he gave him a still small voice and then God gave Elijah this is what you do this is what you do this is what you do even to the great prophet God didn't give instruction until he gave inspiration don't say God what do I do next first let God strengthen you let God renew you let God prosper you in your soul before he prospers you in your relationships in your finances and in your family because sometimes God won't speak because God says you don't need instruction you need strength even Jesus did not hear the leading of the Holy Spirit until the Bible says Jesus was filled with Holy Spirit and then the Spirit led him the Holy Spirit will not lead if Holy Spirit doesn't fill father will not speak if you don't come to him first and not for directions not for destiny but say Lord renew me lift me up put my feet upon the rock when my heart is overwhelmed I will come to you strengthen me God I pray that you will prosper and be good health as your soul prospers uh, John said even in John chapter 15 it says that the branch in me that doesn't bear fruit Jesus doesn't come and say bear fruit Jesus comes to a branch that doesn't bear fruit and the Bible says he lifts it up so that it will bear fruit in other words God is saying when you're down you don't need directions you need peace when you're empty on the inside you don't need the breakthrough first you need a spiritual blessing to repair you on the inside and then God says I will give you instruction because you became my inspiration I became your source of strength and the Bible says David inquired of the Lord and guess what God did he spoke to him I believe a soul that is strengthened is the soul God speaks to and when God speaks it's so beautiful a sense of clarity comes the situation is the same a sense of direction you have a laser focus when God speaks but if God doesn't speak remain in his presence until you can say that about yourself that David said about himself and David strengthened himself in the Lord and then David came and said God give me directions he didn't come to God broken busted grieving distressed and say God what do I do he came to God and say God help me I'm not doing good I'm not doing good I don't know why this is happening I can't blame you I can't blame myself but God help me I'm not gonna make it like this and when God repaired him he came out like a lion laser focus strength came through him his men were still discouraged and he said now guys let's ask God what would he have us do and God spoke clearly he didn't speak to Saul he spoke to David I believe because Saul never sought God as his strength David made God his strength and therefore God spoke to him I just want to encourage you right now make God your strength and God will speak and when he speaks answers will happen David gets an instruction from God he's man awesome there's such a great feeling when God gives you the promise uh, a week ago we were trying to sell our house for two months and we were we had young adults and the youth in our house praying and saying Lord we're just believing that this house will sell and you know the economy kind of took a tank right now and you know people are more afraid and and I had some people tell me man not a good idea that you decided to put your house for sale and, and I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie to you I was kind of a little bit intimidated by what was happening in our economy and everything and we were about to even refinance it and maybe just renting it out instead of selling but we really wanted to sell last week in, on Saturday evening as I was uh, reading some things and my wife gets a phone call and this person calls and says hey I have a potential buyer for your house the moment I overheard that conversation sitting on the couch I heard something in my spirit now I wasn't sure that it was God I'm like 51% sure that's about it but for me it's 51 is already God 
and I felt this thing that says that is the only person that's gonna see your house and that is gonna be your buyer the first and the only my wife hang up she's like guess what somebody's coming to see your house tomorrow and I, I remember I told her I said they're gonna buy it they came they saw the house said nothing they left the next day it was so windy in Tri-Cities and the wind blew out my for sale sign just blew it out during lunch I come back home to eat and I see the for sale sign is gone and I feel like that the fact that the sign is gone is a sign that the house is sold and I hear this witness in the of the Spirit I even recorded an Instagram or Snapchat video and I said I believe it's a sign that I'm gonna get an offer I had no offer nothing and this house would be sold two hours later they submit an offer and it's exactly what we wanted for two months and boom and the house is under contract I just want to give God the glory when God speaks something shifts in your spirit but my friend for you to receive from the Lord you have to renew your strength so I just want to speak God will speak to you about your husband God will speak to you about your wife God will speak to you about your finances he will speak to you about your future but don't focus on hearing his instruction right now focus on making him the source of your inspiration renew yourself in him strengthen himself God will speak oh and when he speaks he will encourage you when David got encouraged by God he got a direction clear-cut direction the Bible says he's on the way to pursue overtake and recover all he meets this guy on the way I'm bringing this message to an end it's an Egyptian and the Bible says this Egyptian is dying and as David meets this guy he he doesn't use him as a distraction he doesn't say oh I just I don't have time for you it's an Egyptian who's dying who needs food and David the Bible says he stops in his pursuit to recovery and he revives a man in fact there's a verse in here that it says when he fed an Egyptian man the Egyptian man received strength can I encourage you somebody as you are on your way to your recovery revive someone who needs something you already have as you are on the way to your breakthrough God will place people in your path who need what you already have don't be so in a hurry that you will say I don't have time for you Samaritan man or the man who was sitting on the side why and the priest and the Levite said we don't have time for this this is a distraction don't be so busy that you don't give raisins and bread to an Egyptian why because what you do for someone who cannot repay you God will put on your account and do it for you as well see when God gave David an instruction about his recover overtake and pursue God never gave him details God never gave him directions did you know who had the directions and the details of how David is to overtake pursue and recover all the very guy whom he fed it's when he fed the Egyptian who seemed like a distraction who seemed like I have more important things to do right now when he fed him it was that Egyptian who gave David a plan a strategy and details and directions of how to pursue overtake and recover I just want to prophesy to all of our life group leaders people who are in the midst of this pandemic are serving to other people I know that you're not serving other people because you have nothing else to do you're not serving other people because you have everything in your life figured out you're serving other people because you have a heart and I want to tell you something God is seeing your sacrifice God is seeing you giving raisins God is seeing you giving bread to the Egyptian to the Samaritan to this and to that and God is going to accelerate your process to your recovery in Jesus mighty name God is gonna see that he's gonna honor you a guy named Chris was born premature and a doctor who was there watching his birth he was on assignment at the time participating in his recovery pretty much sacrificed weeks of his life make sure that this little kid who was born premature this baby will have a chance at life dr. Shannon was his name finally a few weeks later he got a chance to live a few months later he got out of the hospital and little Chris recovered 35 years later Chris becomes a paramedic Chris is now an outstanding citizen of his community one time they get a call that there's an accident in which an elderly man is trapped 
in the burning car and Chris came on the scene you know they did all the stuff that they know how to do they pulled the doors out they pulled this man who already had burns because of the fire they rescued him even though he had burns but he recovered a few days later Chris goes to visit this man in the hospital just out of curiosity and just out of courtesy just to see how is he doing little did he know the very man he rescued 35 years later was the man who rescued him when he was a premature baby and watching Mr. Chris makes it see you never know who you help today how God is going to use that to help you tomorrow that's why those of us who are hosting life groups those of us who are helping others you're not wasting your time you are investing into your future there is a God in heaven and God is seeing will you revive someone so I can recover things for your life as you are on your way to your recovery God will put people in your life who needs revival they need what you already have don't pass them by don't make excuses make progress don't say I don't have time nobody does but do you have a heart and if you do you will make time as your heart beat for the lost for disciples you must say but I, I really believe in for breakthrough for my own life everybody does my friend nobody who's involved in discipleship and in evangelism is someone who has everything in their life figured out we're all on our way to certain recoveries in our life but while we are on our way we want to stop and help this Egyptian help that Egyptian help that person and help that person with whatever we can can somebody say amen when David got the victory the Bible says that he came back and he brought the spoil he shared it with the man who couldn't fight which was controversial because his other men said we should never do that and then he takes out of this victory and he sends it to the elders of Israel David becomes generous with his spoil as I'm bringing this message to an end I'm gonna call you to something right now to do what David did if you are watching and you are like this Egyptian right now you fell on a very hard time you don't have money to feed your family you don't have money to put gas in your car I'm gonna ask you to ask your life group the life group that you go to the small group that you go to could you let them know instead of spamming everyone on social media and telling everybody about your story could I ask you right now to reach out to your small group and say hey I fell on hard times can you come through for me especially those from hungry generation family don't be afraid to do that but if you are here today and you got your breakthrough maybe it's not a big breakthrough it's like a stimulus check perhaps it's it's a breakthrough uh, your business got that grant from the government or maybe you're getting paid and this is not affecting you really much can I ask you right now to do something that David did when he got the victory David did not take all of the sheep for himself the Bible says he shared first with people who didn't fight and secondly he sent it to the elders of Israel the crazy part these elders they didn't help him these elders they were with Saul he could have said I'm not gonna be giving anything to the house of God to the people of God this is they, they're not doing anything for me it was my work that did that but David did not have that attitude one of the reasons we give every single time we make something is because we honor God as the source of our breakthrough many people in the moment of their struggle are tempted not to lean on God and the moment they get breakthrough they're tempted to leave God don't let that be you if you're struggling lean on God but if you have success don't leave God you may say how I not leave God honor God with your breakthrough how do you honor God with your breakthrough the Bible says to honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase your barns will overflow and your vats will be full of new wine I want to invite you as a Christian 
to honor God in your breakthrough. No, maybe it's not the breakthrough you dream of. It's just the breakthrough of your paycheck. It's just the breakthrough of your stimulus check. It's just the breakthrough of the side hustle that you have going on. And you may have every excuse in the world right now to say, but the times are hard. Nobody helped me. Uh, why am I going to give to the church? What did the church do for me? Has nothing to do with that, my friend. Has very little to do with money and has very little to do with church. What it has to do is this. Do you acknowledge God as the source of your breakthrough? Or are you taking that upon yourself? And there when you were hurting said, God help me. But the moment God got you through, you said, God leave me. God, I got this. Thanks. But no thanks. I got this from now. Don't be like that person. Oh, but I believe in God, my friend. Honoring God is different. It involves the heart. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our tithing and offering. If you're part of our family, this is your church. I want you to participate in this. If you are watching us, but this is not your church, partner with us. Whatever the Lord puts on your heart. If you are receiving from this ministry, it's time to share with this ministry. David did that. You know what God did because of that? His recovery became the stepping stone for his real breakthrough, which was the kingdom. If you don't let this little blessing take you away from honoring God in it, God will turn this blessing into a stepping stone. But if in this small blessing you say, oh no, I'm going to retreat to fear. I'm going to retreat to, no, I can't honor God right now. Why? You just understand. I don't know about the future. So I need to save that extra $10, $100 or $1,000. The moment you retreat to fear, my friend, this breakthrough might be the only breakthrough you get. But if you bless God in this breakthrough, this becomes a stepping stone for your kingdom. As the worship team is coming up, I want you to... Take your phone right now or your computer, the means through which we give. As you prepare to give, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that God will strengthen you. I'm going to pray that God will turn the situation around. We're going to pray with our team in just a moment for your business. We're going to pray right now for your family. And we're going to pray for your emotional state. If you don't have anything to give, I want you to give God the promise. Lord, like Jacob did, says, God, if you bless me, I promise to give you 10%. Make that promise say, Lord, if you pull me out and give me that breakthrough, I promise one thing. I will not forget you in my breakthrough. For those of you who have side hustles, the Bible says to honor the Lord with the first fruits of all of your first fruits. So honor God with that. Whether it's the sale of your uh, profit that you made out of your house or the sale, the profit that you made out of a car or the little things that you do on the side to kind of keep yourself afloat. Honor God in that. This is not about money. Please don't get me wrong. It's about your heart and it's about your honor. And as we worship physically, let's worship spiritually. As we worship with our lips, let's worship with our heart right now. You can give through hungrygen.com slash give. Or if you have a church center app, you can go on there and give straight from that app. You can drop your tithing also, send it to the church or during the week the offices are opened and you can bring it and put it into the lobby, into the offering basket over there as well. But let's honor God during this time. This pandemic is not a reason to stop praying, to stop serving, to stop honoring God. Join us right now in this privilege that we have. To honor God in our breakthrough with a small or big. Father I thank you for every person that is watching right now. I pray first of all God I want to thank you for every person that maybe has gotten a small breakthrough. It's not enough to help them reach their dreams but it's enough to get them through this month. I pray that we will honor you like David did. When he recovered everything he didn't just keep it to himself. He paid the people that didn't fight and then he helped the people who were in the nation of Israel. Lord we love your house but God because we honor you and it's right now as we make a decision to honor you through our tithes and our offerings. God I pray that you will redirect our focus toward you. We cast all of our cares upon you God. You're not just our source when we are struggling. 
you are our source when we are doing good God we acknowledge you in our ways in everything that we have we know that everything we have these possessions they're fleeing but you are eternal we want to lean on you when we are struggling and we will never leave you when we are succeeding in Jesus name as you give through the online may God's grace strengthen you may God recover and use this blessing as a stepping stone into the breakthrough he has for you.